Apple's new iMac is fun and colorful, thin and sleek, and now backed by the raw power of Apple's M1 chip. But if you strip away the marketing hype, is this still a computer that you should go out and buy today? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. You've already seen our pink iMac unboxing. Now it's time to deep dive. This is our 2021 iMac review. Before we talk about this iMac, I think a trip down memory lane might help you appreciate it even more. 23 years ago, Apple unveiled the first iMac. The now iconic iMac G3 was oddly shaped, came in a host of colors, and according to Steve Jobs, was built for one purpose, to usher in a new generation of users that wanted to go online. Well, in many ways, the 2021 iMac is similar, also available in a host of colors for the first time in two decades, also built for a purpose, to help us adapt to this new world we live in. The return of color to the iMac hints of a new chapter for Apple. While color has always been in Apple's DNA, we've seen eras where a pure glossy white was the way to go, followed by metallic silver, and then there was a time when metallic silver and space gray were the in thing. But following last year's release of the iPad Air in a full range of colors, and these new iMacs being available in every color of the rainbow, I wouldn't be surprised if rumors of colored MacBook Airs are true. While pro users might gravitate towards more serious silver or chrome finishes and black borders, I think many users will be able to appreciate being able to pick a color that matches your personality, your style, and in the context of the new iMac, your home decor. If you can, I'd definitely go to a store to see what they look like in person before you buy. My pink review device might be called pink, for example, but the stand and keyboard are actually the same color as my rose gold MacBook Air. Its chin is a light pink, but its back is a bright red. While I understand why Apple chose to give these new iMacs a more neutral front face, with white bezels and pastel accents that help you focus on whatever's on your screen, it's a shame that my office is designed in such a way that I can't really enjoy this vibrant color. But I can imagine other setups that will allow this vibrant design to stand out. If you're not a fan of color and want something more classic, there's also one in silver. Because different reviewers get different colors, I'll put links down below to what everybody got so that you can check them out. My buddy Justine, however, has a video unboxing every single color, so that's definitely one you should check out first. But not till you're done watching this review video. And if you like content like this, I'd love it if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us reach our next milestone of 1 million subscribers. Overall, I'm a big fan of this new design. I love the colors, I love how fresh and inviting it feels, and I appreciate all the small details, like the color matching keyboard, mouse, and trackpad, color matching cables, color matched wallpapers. Even here in settings, you can select the highlight color that matches the color of your new Mac. You think that's insane? Well, take a look at this. The curves on the corners of the new iMac match the curves on the corners of its aluminum stand, as well as the curves on the corners of the Magic Keyboard. All of this is reflective of how much thought Apple puts into the design of its products. Now, if only Apple thought up a better way to let you charge your Magic Mouse. In an industry where everything is marketed as thinner and sleeker, it's easy to overlook how thin this new iMac is. But let's pause for a second and give it some context. Here, take a look. The new iMac is 11.5 millimeters thin. It's just a tad bit thicker than the iPhone 12. One could even say it's just an oversized iPad with a built-in stand. It's so thin that one reason why the headphone jack is here on its side is because a headphone plug is longer. Apple says this 30% reduction is part of their vision to quote, make the computer disappear. And if you take a look at the evolution of the iMac through the years, you can better appreciate this feat 
of engineering. A lot of this is thanks to Apple making its own silicon. All of these components that had to be spread out around a motherboard now fit into a tiny system on a chip. Think of this when you hear or read Apple M1. Thanks to M1, all of the parts are small enough to fit right here on the chin, where this band of color sits. Also tucked in here are a pair of fans for cooling and the iMac's impressive new speaker system, which we'll demo in a bit. The new iMac side profile is incredibly sexy, and anyone who says they'd rather it be thicker than have a chin just doesn't get it. Practically speaking, this slimmer profile also allows the iMac to fit into more places than before. Which, if you think about what that might actually mean in 2021, actually makes sense. Because we don't just use our computers in our office anymore. In fact, we haven't for a long time. One room where the iMac makes perfect sense is the kitchen, especially since it's the hub of any home. Imagine being able to quickly glance at your calendar and emails, or catching up on news with your morning coffee, looking up recipe, or answering mom's FaceTime calls when you have your hands full. I would have loved if it also had center stage, that feature that debuted on the new iPad Pro. That way, similar to my Amazon Echo Show 10, the IMAX camera can follow me when I walk around the room. Assuming I had kids or roommates, they could share the iMac to do things like finish their homework or check up on emails. And with Touch ID built into the keyboard, user switching is as easy as pressing this button. There are many other use cases I can think of, like pairing a game controller or two and challenging a friend to a match on Apple Arcade. My only wish is that Apple made its fitness app available on the Mac. That way, if you don't have a big TV like I do, you could use Fitness Plus to work out on this bigger screen. Late last year, Apple announced it would stop using Intel processors on Mac in lieu of its own hardware. That M1 chip I talked about earlier. All you need to know is that M1 is incredibly powerful. So much so that I've dumped my top of the line $5,000 16-inch Intel-powered MacBook Pro for my fanless $1,200 M1 powered MacBook Air because it's faster and quieter. And even if Apple is expected to release a Pro chip later this year for its higher-end devices, I promise M1 delivers enough power not just for the casual user, but also users who do Pro kind of things. Another big improvement to the iMac comes via its larger, higher-resolution display. Even if the screen is just a tad bit larger than last year, it's expanded from 21 to 24 inches thanks to its smaller bezels. And now, you're not stuck at more or less Full HD. Instead, you get what Apple calls a 4.5K display. What this means is that if you're working on something, there's plenty of screen real estate for many windows side by side. Everything is crisp, and if you're watching movies, this display is as good as any high-end TV. Pair that with new and improved speakers that sound rich and well-balanced and can make you feel like sound envelops you. This iMac is perfect for movie night too. Here, have a listen. While conference calls have been around for a long while now, these days, they're ubiquitous. So much so that everyone has at some point looked into ways to level up their Zoom calls. TLDR, it's all about good lighting, good audio, and a good camera. Unfortunately, most folks are stuck with the camera that's built into their computers. Thankfully, Apple is giving the IMAX camera a long overdue upgrade. Between the bump in resolution, a larger sensor, and the ISP that's on the M1 chip, you're going to look a whole lot better on video calls. If that all sounds a bit Greek to you, let me explain. You know how the iPhone does all that magic with trillions of computations so that photos come out amazing all the time? That's what the iMac does too, and even how you look at night. Now while I don't have an old iMac to compare with, here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the front camera of the 16-inch MacBook Pro so that you can see how big of a difference there actually is. How do I look and sound? Let me know in the comments section below. Before we wrap up, some quick fire Q&A. Is there anything you don't like 
I don't like the fact that Apple removed the SD card slot and while I'm wishing, I would have loved two extra USB-A ports as well. If the Mac Mini and the iMac both run the M1 chip, which one should I get? Good question. As Apple's entire lineup now gets M1 chips, you have to decide based on what you need. There is a certain convenience of buying an iMac because you get everything you need in the box. But if you're particular about the kind of display, the kind of mouse or keyboard that you want to use, then maybe the Mac Mini does make more sense. In terms of power, both are equally as powerful, but with two fans versus one, if you're really pushing both machines to the extreme for an extended period of time, technically, better cooling means sustained peak performance longer. Which iMac model should I get? I'd skip the entry-level model and get the mid-tier 2021 iMac, the one that's available in all colors, has four USB-C ports, and comes with a keyboard with Touch ID. If you want, throw in a few customizations, like 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I'd pay that extra $50 for the Magic Trackpad versus the Magic Mouse. So, is the 2021 iMac your gadget match? This pink iMac is a review device, but I've already ordered a blue one, and it's going to be my first desktop Mac ever. And that's not necessarily surprising considering my mobile lifestyle. I've just never found the need for one. But late last year, like many of you forced to work at home, I found myself wanting a desk, an ergonomic chair, and a monitor so that I could sit down and be productive in front of a big screen. Over the last few months, mirroring my inability to travel, my poor MacBook Air 2 has been grounded, docked in an almost permanent space at the corner of my desk. And so the arrival of this new iMac excites me, not just because it's fresh and new, but because it's exactly the kind of Mac that I need for this new normal. And if you find yourself in the same boat, I wholeheartedly recommend it too. And that was our 2021 iMac review. I was just looking back at the history of the iMac and I realized that the design of last year's model hadn't been updated since 2012. That's a long time and it's about time we got a new one and I'm pretty thrilled about it. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, folks, now's the time to do so. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish new videos. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.